Hi, I'm Peter Burris and welcome to this week's Action Item. Once again, we're broadcasting from our beautiful The Cube Studios in Palo Alto, California, and the Wikibon team is a little bit smaller this week for a variety of reasons. I'm being joined remotely by uh, Neil Radin and Jim Kabilis. How you doing, guys? We're doing great, Peter. I'm Pretty good, thank Neil. you. All right, and it's actually a good team for what we're <laughs> going to talk about. We're going to be specifically talking about some uh, interesting developments. In 14 days or so, uh, GDPR is going to kick in and people who are behind will find themselves potentially subject to significant fines. Uh, we actually were talking to a, a chief privacy officer here in the U.S. who told us that had the Equinix breach occurred in Europe after May 25, 2018, it would have cost, uh, or Equifax, the Equifax breach, it would have cost Equifax over $160 billion. So these are very, very real types of money that we're talking about. But as we started thinking about some of the implications of GDPR and when it's going to happen and the circumstances of, this, uh, of, its, of its success or failure and what it's going to mean commercially to businesses, we also started trying to fold in a, a second trend. And that second trend is the role that Bitcoin is going to play. Bitcoin has a number of different benefits. We'll get into some of that in a bit. But one of them is that the data is immutable. And GDPR has certain expectations regarding a firm's flexibility and how it can manage and handle data. And blockchain may not line up with some of those issues as well as uh, a lot of the blockchain advocates might think. Jim, what are some of the specifics? Well, Peter, yeah, blockchain is the uh, underlying distributed hyperledger trusted database, uh, underlying Bitcoin and many other things. Blockchain, um, you know, the, one of the core things about blockchain that makes it distinctive is that you can create records and uh, append them to blockchains. You can read from them, but you can't delete them or update them. It's not a CRUD database. It's uh, essentially for you to be able to go in and uh, you know and, and erase a personally identifiable information record on an EU subject, EU, EU citizen, in a blockchain, it's not possible uh, if you stored it there. Uh, in other words, blockchain then at the very start, because it's an immutable database, would not allow you to comply with uh, the GDPRs required that people have been given a right to be forgotten is what, what it's called. That is a huge issue that might put the big kibosh on implementation of blockchain, not just for PII in the EU, but really for multinational businesses, anybody who does business in Europe and the core, you know, core nations like, you know, disregard Brexit for now, like Germany and France and Italy, you got to be conformant completely worldwide, essentially, with your in your 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 PII management capabilities um, in order to pass muster with the regulators in the EU and avoid these massive fines. Blockchain seems like it would be incompatible with that compliance. So, where does the blockchain industry go, or does it go anywhere, or will it shrink? Will the mania die because of the GDPR? slap in the face. Probably not, but there is a second issue as well, Jim, at least I think there is, and that is blockchain is, uh, allows for uh, anonymity, which means that everybody effectively has a copy of the ledger anywhere in the world. So if you've got personally identifiable information coming out of the EU, and you're a member or you're a part of that blockchain network living in California, you get a copy of the ledger. Now you may not be able to read the details and maybe that protects folks who might implement applications in blockchain, but it's a combination of both the fact that the ledger is fully distributed and that you can't go in and make adjustments so that people can be forgotten based on EU laws. Have I got that right? That's right, and then there's a gray area. You can't encrypt any and every record in a blockchain and conceal it from the prying eyes of people in California or in Thailand or wherever, or in the EU. But that doesn't delete it. That's not the same as erasing or deleting. So there's a gray issue and there's no clarity from the EU regulators on this. What if you use secret keys to encrypt individual records, PII on a blockchain, and then lost the keys or deleted the keys, is that effectively, would that be the same as erasing the record, even though those bits would right. still be there to be unreadable? 
none of this has really been addressed in practice. Um, and so it's all a gray area. It's a huge risk factor for companies that are considering exploring uses of blockchain for managing identity and you know, security and all that other good stuff related to the records of people living in EU member countries. So it seems as though we have two things that are going to have that are that are likely to happen. First off, it's very clear that a lot of the GDPR related regulations uh, were written in advance of comprehending what blockchain might be, and so it doesn't. And GDPR typically doesn't uh, dictate implementation styles, so it may have to be amended to accommodate some of the block a blockchain implementation style. Uh, but it also suggests that increasingly we're going to hear from a design standpoint uh, the breaking up of data associated with a transaction so that some of the metadata associated with that transaction may end up in the blockchain, but some of the actual PII related data uh, that uh, is more sensitive from a GDPR or other standpoint might remain outside of the blockchain. So the blockchain effectively becomes a distributed secure network for managing metadata in certain types of complex transactions. Uh, does, is, is, that, is that in scope of what we're talking about, Jim? Yeah. In fact, you raised uh, and alluded to a big issue for implementers. There will be on-chain implementations of particular data, uh, data applications, and off-chain implementations. Off-chain, off-blockchain will probably be all the PII, you know, in databases, relational and so forth, that allow you to do deletes and updates and so forth, and, you know, to comply with, you know, GDPR and so forth, and similar mandates elsewhere. GDPR is not the only privacy mandate on earth. And then there's on-chain applications that you'll, where the data, what data sets will you uh, store in blockchains? You mentioned metadata. Now metadata, I'm not sure, because metadata quite often is, is updated for lots of reasons, for lots of operational applications. But really, fundamentally, if we look at what a blockchain is, it's a audit log. It's an archive, potentially, of, of a in a distributed fashion. Historical data that never changes, and you don't want it to change. Yeah, ideally, I mean, like in an audit log, you know, let's say in the Internet of Things, uh, autonomous vehicles crash and so forth, and the data on how they operate should be stored, you know, either in a black box on the devices, on the cars themselves, and also possibly backed up to a distributed blockchain where there's a transaction, or there's a, there's a, a, a trusted, persistent, resilient record of what went on. That would be a perfect idea for using blockchains for storing perhaps trusted timestamp, maybe encrypted records on things like that. Because ultimately, the regulators and the courts and the lawyers and everybody else will want to come back and subpoena and use those records to an and analyze what went on. I mean... For example, that's an idea where something like a blockchain conceivably might be employed that doesn't necessarily have to involve PII, unless, of course, it's an individual person's car. And so there's all those great areas for those kinds of applications. So right now it's kind of looking fuzzy for a blockchain in lots of applications where identity can be either... Uh, is, where you can infer easily the, infer the identity of individuals from data that may not on the face of it, look like it's PII. So, Neil, I want to come back to you because it's this notion of being able to infer. One of the things that's been going on in, in the industry for the past, well, 60 years is the dream of being able to create a transaction and persist that data, but then generate derivative value out of that data through things like analytics, data sharing, et cetera. Uh, blockchain, because it is, uh, you know, it, it basically locks that data away from prying eyes. It kind of suggests that we want to be careful about utilizing blockchain for applications where the data could have significant or could generate significant derivative use. What do you think? Well, uh, it, it, we've known for a long, long time that if you have anonymized data um, in a data set, uh, that if you can merge that data with data from another data set, relatively easy to find out who the individuals are. Right. Um, you add you add DNA stuff to that, uh, EHR records, uh, uh, surveys, things from social media. You know everything about people, um, and and that's dangerous because we used to think that while well, losing our losing our privacy means they're going to keep giving us uh, recommendations to buy these fancy shoes. It's much more sinister than that you can be discriminated against in employment 
in, in insurance, in your credit rating, and all sorts of things. So it's, it's, I think, a really burning issue. But what does it have to do with blockchain and, and GDDR? Uh, that's an important question. I think that blockchain is a really immature technology right now. And like all immature technologies, it's either going to evolve very quickly or it's going to wither and die. Um, I'm not going to speculate which one it's going to be. But this issue of how you can use it and how you can anonymize data and things that are immutable, I think they're all unanswered questions for the wider uh, role of, of applications. Uh, but to me, it seems like you can get away from the immutable part by taking previous information and simply locking it away with, with encryption or something else and adding new information. The problem becomes, I think, what happens to that data once someone uses it for other purpose than putting it uh, in a ledger. And the other question I have about GDDR in blockchain is, who's enforcing this? Uh, what <laughs> army of people are sifting through all this data to decide who's in violation? Does it take a breach before they have it? Or is there or something else going on? Or is, hey, Neil, is the act of participating in a blockchain uh, equivalent to uh, owning or, uh, or or having some visibility or something into a system. So I think it's a great question. Uh, and GDPR again hasn't doesn't seem to have answers to, uh, to that question. Jim, what were you going to say? Yeah, the, the EU and its member nations have not worked out have not worked out those issues in terms of how will you know they monitor enforcement and enforce GDPR in practical terms. I mean, clearly it's going to require on the parts of Germany and France and the others, and maybe, you know, out of Brussels, there might be some major directorate for GDPR monitoring and oversight uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, both companies operating in those nations as well as overseas with European records. But none of that's been worked out by those nations. Clearly, that's like, you know, it's uh, just like the implementation issues like blockchain or not blockchain. It's, we're, we're moving in toward the end of the month with, you know, not only have those issues not worked out, many companies, many enterprises, both in Europe and elsewhere, are not GDPR ready. There may some of them. I'm not going to name names. May make a a good boast that they are, but no, nobody really knows what it means to be ready at this point. Um, I, I, this 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 came to me very clearly when I asked Bernard Marr. Uh, well-known uh, author and you know influencer in the big data space at um in berlin a few weeks ago at uh, at the uh, data works summit i said bernard you know you consult all over with big companies what percentage of, of of your clients and without giving names do you think are really truly gdpr ready for may 25th he said very few because they're not sure what it means either everybody's groping their way towards some kind of a Hopefully, risk mitigation stra risk mitigation strategy for you know addressing this issue. Well, the technology certainly is moving faster than uh, the law, and I'd say and argue even faster than the ethics. It's going to be very interesting to see how things play out. Uh, so, we're just for anybody that's interested, we are actually in the midst right now, of doing, right now, doing some uh, a nice piece of research on uh, blockchain patterns for applications, and what we're talking about essentially here is the idea that blockchain will be applicable to certain classes of applications, but a whole bunch of other applications it will not be applicable to. So it's another example of a technology that initially people go, oh wow, that's the technology that's going to solve all problems. All data is going to move into the cloud. Uh, Jim, you like to point out Hadoop. All data and all <laughs> applications are going to migrate to Hadoop. And clearly it's not going to happen. Uh, Neil, the way I would answer the question is that blockchain reduces the opportunity for multiple parties to enter into opportunism. So that you can use a blockchain as a basis for assuring uh, certain classes of behaviors as a group, as a community, and, uh, and, and, be, uh, and, and have that be relatively auditable and understandable. So it can reduce the opportunity for opportunism. So you know, companies like IBM probably are right that the idea of a supply chain oriented blockchain that's capable of, of uh, assuring that all parties, when they are working together, are not exploiting holes in the contracts, that they're actually complying in getting equal value out of whatever that blockchain system is, and they're not gaming it. Uh, while they can go off and use their own data to do other things if they want, that's kind of the in-chain and out-of-chain notion. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the course of the next few years, but clearly, even in the example that I described, the whole question of GDPR compliance doesn't go away. All right, so let's get to some action items here. Uh, Neil, what's your action item? Uh, 
Well, <clears throat> God, I have a whole bunch of them, I suppose. But uh, when it comes to uh, GDPR and, and blockchain, I just have a huge number of questions about how they're actually going to be able to um, enforce it. Um, and when it comes to personal information, you know, um, back in the Middle Ages, um, when you went to the market to buy a baby pig, they put it in a bag and tied it because they wouldn't want the piglet to run away because it would take too much trouble to find it. Uh, but when you got it home, sometimes they actually didn't give you a pig, they gave you a cat. And when you opened up the bag, the cat was out of the bag. That's where the phrase comes from. So I I'm just waiting for the cat to come out of the bag. Uh, I, I think this sounds like a real fad that was uh, built around Bitcoin, and we're trying to find some way to use it in some other way, but I'm, I just don't know what it is. I'm not convinced. Jim, action item. My advice, yeah, my advice for data managers is to start to segment your data sets into those that are forgettable under GDPR and those that are unforgettable. The forgettable ones is anything that has <laughs> publicly identifiable information or that can be easily aggregated into identifying specific attributes of specific people, whether they're in Europe or elsewhere is a secondary issue. The unforgettable is the stuff that it has to remain inviolate uh, and persistent and cannot be deleted and so forth. The stuff, all the unforgettables are suited to writing to one or more blockchains but they are not kosher with GDPR and other privacy mandates. And focusing on the unforgettable data, whatever that might be, then conceivably investigate using blockchain for distributed you know, uh, you know, access and so forth. But bear in mind that blockchain is just one database technology among many in a very hybrid data architecture. You got so many ways to skin the cat in terms of HDFS versus blockchain versus you know uh, you know no various NoSQL variants. Don't imagine because blockchain is the flavor the mania of the day that you got to go there. There's lots and lots of alternatives. All right, so here's our action item overall. Uh, this week we discussed on action item the uh, uh, coming. Uh, confrontation between GDPR, which is, uh, has been in effect for a while, but actually fines will start being levied after May 25th, and blockchain. GDPR has relatively, or prescribes relatively script, strict rules regarding a firm's control over personally identifiable information. Uh, you have to have it stored within the bounds of the EU if it derives from an EU source and also it has to be forgettable. That source, if they choose to be forgotten, the firm that owns that data or administers and stewards that data has to be able to get rid of it. This is in conflict with blockchain, which says that the ledgers associated with the blockchain will be, first of all, fully distributed, and second of all, immutable. Uh, and that provides some very powerful application opportunities. Uh, but it's not GDPR compliant on the face of it. Over the course of the next few years, no doubt, we will see the EU and other bodies try to bring blockchain and blockchain-related technologies into a regulatory regime that actually is administrable uh, as, as well as uh, auditable and enforceable. Uh, but it's not there yet. Uh, does that mean that folks in the EU should not be thinking about blockchains? We don't know. It means it introduces a risk that has to be accommodated. But we at least think that, the, that what has to happen is uh, data managers on a global basis need to start adding to it this, a concept of forgettable data and unforgettable data to ensure that it can remain in compliance. The final thing we'll say is that ultimately blockchain is another one of those technologies that has great science fiction qualities to it. Uh, but when you actually start thinking about how you're going to deploy it, uh, there are very practical realities associated with what it means to build an application on top of a blockchain data store. Ultimately, our expectation is that blockchain will be an important technology, but it's going to take a number of years for knowledge to diffuse about what blockchain actually is suitable for and what it's not suitable for. And this question of GDPR and blockchain uh, interactions is going to be a, an important catalyst to having some of those conversations. Once again, Neil, Jim, thank you very much for participating in Action Item today.
My pleasure. And uh, I'm, Peter Burr. I'm Peter Burris, and you've been once again uh, listening to a Wikibon action item. Until we talk again. <laughs>